Hello, I'm Richard Bryan. And I'm Andrew Rodriguez. Welcome to Shade Tree University. Every week right here on Shade Tree University, we're going to show you how to look at different and cool things that will help you and your Volkswagen car. We're going to show you how to use the VADCOM cable system and the VADCOM computer program, how to diagnose different problems with your TDI, your Volkswagen, and then how to fix them. On today's show, we're going to show you the basics of using a VADCOM cable, how to check your turbo actuator, check for vacuum leaks, and we're going to respond to your feedback from last week's pilot episode. Hi guys, today one of my tuning customers in New York asked me, what is VADCOM? VADCOM is this diagnostic tool. Uh, we use it to check error codes. It's also great for checking logs. Um, you can check your vehicle's boost, fueling, engine timing, and we use it to check and modify thousands of other things. It can also be used to do convenience mods on some of the newer cars, like rolling the windows up and down with your key fob or making your hazard lights come on automatically if you come to an extreme stop on the highway. Today, I'm going to show you how to do both those mods on my MK5 Jetta Sport Lighter. The first thing you're going to want to do if this is a new VADCOM cable to you is you're going to go to Options and press Test. This is going to validate the VADCOM cable. After it's validated, you press OK, and then you press Save. The first mod that we're going to do today is we're going to make the emergency lights come on automatically when you come to an extreme stop on the highway. So we're going to go to number 9, Central Electric. Then we're going to go to Coding. It's really important that you write this number down. This is the programming for this control module. If you don't save it and you make a mistake, you're up a creek without a paddle. If you have that number, it's okay. All you got to do is put it back in. So I print screen, save it. I've already written mine down. I'm going to go to long coding helper. And now I think we're going to go to bit 16. Yep, bit 16. Turn on emergency brake light flash. And uh, press the close screen button and press do it. All right, coding was accepted. We're going to get out of this controller. And because this is MK5, we're going to go over to number 46, Central Convenience. This is where we can do the window mod. For MK6s, that would still be in number 9, Central Electric. Again, we're going to save this number. I've already done it. Long coding helper. And then we're going to go over to, I think it's byte 7 or 8. It's byte 7. So we're going to turn on all these options except byte 6. Um, if you have a sunroof in your car, there's some other options that you can turn on. My car doesn't have a sunroof, so I won't be turning it on. It's neat to take a look around, see if there's anything interesting. As long as you saved your long coding number, you can play with it. Now press do it. And the coding was accepted. Now I'm going to get out and test it. Programming is all done. You can get out and uh, test it out now. So you make the windows go down. You're going to press and hold the unlock key. <coughs> Make windows go down as long as you're holding it. To make them go up, it's real easy. You press the lock key and hold it, and the window should go up. Richard, have you ever lost the key to your house and had to get another one made? I can't count the number of times that I've had to go to the store and get another key made. What did that cost you to get it replaced last time? Anytime you go to one of the big box stores, it's either Three, four, five dollars just to get a key made. Can you get one made for your new Beetle at the dealer for that price? <laughs> you can't even walk in a dealership for that kind of price. I think last time I checked, it was well over two hundred dollars just to get a key made. I think one of the most annoying and expensive parts of owning a Volkswagen is uh, the expensive cost of getting a replacement done. I mean, it's two hundred fifty dollars at the dealer usually. Yeah, but I hear they're really, really sophisticated, and that's why it costs so much to get one made. There's actually uh, quite a lot of parts to uh, the Volkswagen key, and a couple steps to programming them. You have the battery, the lower key fob shell, the wireless entry electronics, the upper key fob shell, the RFID chip, the cam, the key blade, the emblem, 
You can buy keys that have all these parts included at our website, fixmyvw.com. If you've ever heard that these keys are laser cut, it's really not true. These keys are actually cut with a high security key machine. It's sort of like a mini laser. Andrew, don't you have one of those key cutting machines? I do. If you're interested in replacing your key or just getting a spare made, we can cut you a new key for $25. We have a new key fob for less than 40 Lots of key parts, accessories, and emblems, fob shells, immobilizers, keys, and chips. And we have silicone key covers too. If you want to find out more about any products you see on this show, please visit That's Good Stuff at ShadeTreeUniversity.com. Here on Shade Tree University, we said we're going to tell you about different things that are applicable to you and your TDI and what makes the thing run. This is a brand spanking new Garrett uh, VNT17 Turbo. And we're going to tell you a few of the things and the aspects of this turbo that are good and some of the things that can go wrong on the turbo that you now have on your car, what you can check for, what you can look for, and maybe what you can fix down the line. Again, a brand new VNT17 Turbo, a little bit different than the one you probably have on your car because this one here will actually work with a, an electronic actuator or a vacuum actuator for the turbo vanes, which makes it really nice. So it is almost a plug and play when you replace your old stock VNT15. The turbo itself will normally set like this on your car, butts up against the back of the car like this, and that's how it will set, and you'll see something up here in the top. This actually is for what we call the EGR cooler, and this will go up to your EGR. It'll actually warm the EGR up for starting, but you'll notice a lot of people are talking about an EGR delete. Well, what we do when we do that EGR delete is we actually take off all the mechanism between this and your EGR, and we use a block off plate and cut it off right here. Then you can either use this portal right here, either for, well, nothing, just simply block it off, or you can stick your EGT uh, probe, that's exhaust gas temperature probe, down in this hole to measure your exhaust gas temperatures. But one of the things that goes wrong a lot <coughs> on these turbochargers is what we call the actuator valve itself. <coughs> that's this part right here. You'll hear a lot of people say, well, it has a sticking actuator. What does that mean? That means really that this little part right here, this little rod right here, is not actually going in and out. The actuator is not allowing it to go in and out through a vacuum source. And what we're going to do, this is how we kind of look at them to find out if they are working or not, a test that you can do even on your car. This will normally have a little black hose coming off of it and going back to your V, or what we call the N75 on the, on the firewall of your car. You can simply disconnect it, take a vacuum pump, any vacuum pump will do. And if you look at this little actuator rod again, if it goes in and out while you apply the vacuum, you know that the vacuum actuator is good and that's not your problem. So take a look right down in here. And as I pump it up, you can see this little arm kind of going in. And it'll go in until it stops. It should get about, uh, about 15, 18 pounds of pressure and that'll stop and that's it. So we see it, it's clear at the end of its travel. Then we'll release the vacuum back off of the actuator and it goes back. That tells us that this actuator is actually good and the veins on the inside of the turbocharger are going one way and then releasing back the other way. So that's what we do when we look for a turbocharger, add a turbocharger on the car to find out if the actuator itself is working or not working. Some of the other things you can look for on your turbocharger is a lot of people will say, well the hot side is probably kind of plugged up a little bit. What's the hot side? What's the cold side on a turbo? The turbocharger actually works off of the exhaust gas. As the gases come out of the engine, out of the exhaust manifold, they come in through this. This is the exhaust manifold. Comes out of the motor through these little portals here, and it turns a big fan in here. There's a little fan right in here. I don't know if you can see it or not. It'll turn, which will turn the cold side of the turbocharger itself, which forces the air back through your intercooler and back up into your intake side of your motor. So you look down in here, and see if this little old fan in here is turning. If it's really nice and free, probably your turbocharger is good. And you'll move this little vein up and down here also. It's a little rod that goes through the entire length of the turbocharger. Move it up and down. If there's any play in it, you probably have a bad turbocharger. But like this one, again, it's a brand new one. Absolutely no play in it. And the veins in there turn very freely. That's kind of the turbocharger here on your ALH or any of your uh, <coughs> turbo diesels on with the, uh, the uh, Volkswagens, 
and it's one way to check it out, like I said, with a vacuum gauge. Make sure the arm is actuating back and forth, and that's one of the ways that you can check to see if your turbo and your turbo actuator is working. I'm Richard Bryan. Hope you enjoyed this segment of Shade Tree University, right here on Shade Tree University at ShadeTreeUniversity.com. Just a few seconds ago, I was showing you the actual turbocharger on this 1.9 turbo diesel. And this is a perfectly good example of the application of how the 1.9 turbo diesel works and that same turbo that you just uh, had a look at out of the car. The turbo itself sits down back behind the motor back down here, and I said it sets up this way. Well, that's what it does. It sets up kind of uh, vertically down inside, but in the back of the motor. But how does that little actuator valve work that I showed you? A lot of people say that a diesel doesn't have vacuum. Well, it really does have vacuum. And here, driven off the end of the camshaft on this 1.9 TDI diesel is a vacuum pump. The vacuum pump not only runs the turbocharger, but it also runs the vacuum booster on the brakes, so you have good brakes here on these little TDIs. This is a 1999 Volkswagen uh, Beetle. Belongs to my daughter, and it's a nice little car. But anyway, what it does when we get the vacuum out of the end, the car starts, and we get the vacuum out of the end of this vacuum pump, actuates the brakes, and it also comes up here and actuates what we call the N75. The N75 is direct, directly ran down to the turbocharger. And when you apply gas, a little bit of vacuum comes on, it'll activate that little plunger I was showing you a few seconds ago, and it will let the turbocharger vanes open and then close when you let off on the gas. So again, vacuum coming out of here, going down, activating the brakes if you need those, but coming up here to the N75 and also the N118 here. The N118, again, is another vacuum device that activates and operates what we call the EGR valve on a turbo diesel. The EGR valve is there for a couple of reasons. It's for a smooth shutdown. There's a little flapper valve inside here that is activated by this 118. And when you turn the car off, it closes down the uh, air going into the intake manifold. It gives you a nice, quiet, easy shutdown. And the other side of that is if you have a runaway, if you've ever heard of a turbo diesel or any diesel having a runaway, it means it's sucking in a fuel source from somewhere else. And normally it's the oil out of the bottom of the motor. But again, if you cut the air supply off on it, the motor's going to shut down. So if that little flapper valve is in place in there, it'll go ahead and shut off, and that'll again allow your motor to be turned off in case of a runaway. But we do have vacuum on a motor, and again, you'll see that the lines here are, oh, well, these here have been on here quite a while, and it probably wouldn't hurt to replace the lines. So if you're having a problem with your vacuum and your turbocharger activating, one of the things I'd look at real quickly is, are these lines here really good. If they're not starting to fray a little bit, well you can just go ahead and call up A.A. Rodriguez and order a set of vacuum lines for your car. There's two sizes here, one a small size and that uh, just operates the, well it operates the EGR, operates the uh, different various things on the car, and then the big side that'll go down and operate the turbocharger itself. So again, if you have a problem with your turbocharger, blowing out a lot of black smoke, meaning you're overfueling, these are some of the things that I'd check right off the bat. And again, you can check your turbocharger like we did a while ago with the vacuum pump. And there's one more way you can do it. When you first start the car up, if you're brave enough, you can reach down and actually touch that rod by coming in here behind the motor. And when you start the car up, you'll get vacuum and it'll actually activate that little valve down there also, the uh, actuator on the side of that uh, turbocharger. But that's just a few things you can look at if you're having a problem with your turbocharger or if you're activating your turbocharger is not activating correctly. Check out your vacuum lines. Check to make sure that your actuator on your turbocharge is actually actuating. And again, if those are working fine and you're still not getting a good action on your turbocharger, look at your N75 and check it out also. Again, that's just a few things you can look at on your TDI diesel. And that's the kind of things that we're going to have for you each and every week right here on Shade Tree University. <laughs> We told you that each and every week we'd be telling you about some event coming up here in the local region, nationally or internationally. And here in the southeast we have something very important and very exciting coming up. Andrew, what is it? That's right, Richard. The fourth annual Midlands Biofuel Get Together is July 12th. It's in downtown Winsboro in South Carolina. I've gone to it the last two years. It's a really cool place to visit. The owner, Joe, always gives a tour of the factory and shows you the equipment and the process used to make biodiesel. Um, they're going to have B100 biodiesel available for $3 per gallon. If you want more information about this, check out the southeast section of the TDI club. 
Next week, we'll have more exciting events about what's going on around your TDI. You said it, we listened. You said get rid of the mic stand. That's done. Done. You said I want to see turbocharger and this turbocharger. Uh, that's done, but we have a lot more to come to. You said teach us about VADCOM and start with the basics. You saw the beginning, but there's a lot more on that to come. You said fix the light. And that's done. This was our second episode. We hope you like the improvements. There's many more to come. Have you come up with a great quick fix for your car that saved time, money, or a trip to the dealer? We want to hear about it. Maybe we'll feature it on a future episode. And remember, you can reach us at ShadeTreeUniversity.com and through Shade Tree University, you can access all of our social medias. Have a great week. I'm Andrew Rodriguez. And I'm Richard Bryan. And every week, you'll see us right here on Shade Tree University. We want to hear about it. Maybe we'll feature it on the future episode. Remember, you can get all of your questions asked to us, through us, and back to it, and let's do it to it. <laughs>